let's take you through the family monthly income of respondents in Himachal Pradesh to give you a sense of why this exit poll and the poll in Himachal is so complicated because as you move along the income pyramid the choice of voters seems to change. If a respondent had an income of less than 5,000, amongst them 47% said they voted for the BJP, 41% said they voted for the Congress. So the poorest said they voted for the BJP 6% more than the Congress. Amongst those who had a salary between an income between 5,000 to 10,000, 45% said they voted for the BJP, 43% said they voted for the Congress. Amongst those who have an income between 10 and 20,000, now it changes. Congress 46%, BJP 40%. Amongst those who have an income between 20 and 30,000, you've got 44% saying they voted for the Congress, 41% saying they voted for the BJP. With those who have an income of more than 30,000, you had 42% saying they voted for the Congress, 40% saying they voted for the BJP. So amongst the poorest people of Himachal Pradesh, Pradeep, you had more people saying they voted for the BJP. Uh, BJP. Amongst the richer people, you had more people saying they voted for the Congress. Yes, and this is linked to the urban constituencies and urban people who but have... there are hardly any urban seats in... in the urban, yeah, but still in each and every constituency, there are urban people as well, you know, those who are in the main city area. So, here the trend is reverse. Uh, mostly it was the Congress was always doing better in lower section of the society and BJP was always in the higher and middle income. Why group. do you think that's the case in Himachal Pradesh? Himachal Pradesh, see, there are three, four things are clubbing together here. One is the beneficiaries and farmers. Here when you say poor is bulk of them are farmers. And the difference between uh, BJP and Congress among the farmers is far greater because of the benefit of Kisan Samman Nidhi over here. No, but this is also represented in the urban rural divide of Himachal Pradesh, where the Congress, and this is very interesting if you track the politics of the Congress, the Congress seems to have a major lead over the Bharatiya Janata Party in the urban pockets of Himachal. It's another matter that there are very few urban pockets in Himachal Pradesh, but it has a 14% vote share gap. 37% of urban voters in Himachal tell us that they voted for the BJP. 51% said they voted for the Congress. Flip that to rural areas where you've got a dead heat at 43-43. 43% saying BJP. We're giving some teasers about what the numbers could look like, which we'll be putting out in just a short while from now. But this 14% gap, Rajdeep, is very interesting. In urban areas, this is the first time I'm seeing this since 2014. You actually, and remember in 2009, the Congress did well in the Lok Sabha elections because they won in the urban pockets, even in states like Uttar Pradesh. This seems to be happening in Himachal. The problem for the Congress is that they are doing very well in urban areas in a state with a limited <laughs> urban population. If these numbers, if these numbers were Gujarat, mm. the Congress would be, you know, through. The fact is, Himachal Pradesh is a state divided, as I said, between upper and lower, that is east and west. Yes, there are splits, urban, rural, but I maintain, Rahul, the gender gap is going to be critical. If Pradeep Gupta's numbers are right, they will be right because he's got the gender skew right. If they are wrong, it will be only because women have come and voted in larger numbers. I maintain Narendra Modi has the edge among women voters. One question I have from Mr. Gupta is that he said that BJP is getting 34% of the SC vote. 52 of the SC vote is going to the Congress. That is an 18% <coughs> vote difference. But here you are saying that those yeah. with lower incomes are voting for the, the BJP. Hmm. Now you mean to say the SC in uh, Himachal Pradesh are rich? No, no, no. It's not like that. SCs is only 20%. Then you have 80% left out. Out of that 80%, 10% is higher income group and roughly 20% is middle income group, okay. upper middle.